my name is Chris Dravsov. I'm a Community Development Field Specialist with SDSU Extension. Thank you for watching this iGrow podcast on dealing with theft and vandalism in your school or youth garden program. From kids trying to have fun or trying to just prove something or to simply hungry people uh, wanting food, you will likely deal with theft or vandalism in your school garden situation. Most gardens are going to experience this. Community outreach is a huge component of a, a school or educational garden. Uh, volunteers and neighbors are needed, even though it's at the school. Uh, there's a lot of work to starting the new garden, and so make sure you have several people at the table that will help you. And um, getting neighbors invested in, and have, having them help you keep a watchful eye on the garden space is very important. You may need to ask neighbors specifically to watch the garden um, or make a request to a neighborhood watch group. Uh, consider even reserving a space for neighbors who live around the school garden to pick from or you could plant extra in a location, kind of a sacrificial area, and mark it with a sign that says, free for the taking. Um, some theft may simply be because people are hungry and um, Providing this extra space may deter them from interfering with the educational pieces of your garden. Uh, simply having crops in that plot such as tomatoes or strawberries or raspberries or other favorites may help keep people out of the garden space. Um, you could also put out a basket from this space and say free for the taking. But keep in mind that this garden really becomes a, a neighborhood landmark or an asset to the neighborhood. So you want to encourage neighborhood involvement. Invite them to the space. Um, have a garden party or a harvest festival or music and, and uh, invite those neighbors to come on over. Lowell Elementary in Sioux Falls has what they call a harvest festival every year and they get around 500 people that actually attend this garden party. Uh, other things can go on in the space besides just discussion on the garden, but uh, uh, having the focus be in the garden is a, is a great way to launch a party and get these neighbors involved. Uh, the activity increases people getting into the space, uh, they'll see that there's value in this garden and that it's being utilized into the school. Uh, be sure to invite uh, other people such as police or fires, uh, firefighters from nearby stations to come to the event. It's important to be friends with the uh, police that patrol the, the neighborhood and, and um, you may even need to attend a community meeting um, or a meeting with, with the police just so that they're aware that this garden exists because extra patrols could also help deter uh, some of the activity that could happen. Remind students uh, that this space belongs to them. Help them build pride and ownership in this garden space. Uh, we encourage um, people to come into the space, especially in the, the evening when you maybe see these children hanging around in the space. And, and, and often the, the kids hanging around could be the culprits behind uh, the, the vandalism. So just uh, visiting the space, having a garden manager come into the space, or, or a teacher who runs the program walk through from time to time. Uh, when you see those kids hanging around, invite them into the space, invite them to participate with uh, an adult or come to a program that you may be offering with the garden. Um, they may grow to appreciate the space and, and stop vandalizing or, or causing havoc there. Um, do also invite those older youth that have gone through your garden program to come back once they've graduated from the elementary school, for example, uh, when they move to middle school and high school. Invite them to come back and be teachers and be involved in the garden. Signage. It can be helpful. It can help identify who owns uh, and uses the garden. Start by presenting your signage in a friendly manner, non-threatening manner. Just explain who the garden is for and why it's used. That this is a school garden and we use this for educational purposes. Um, if it's a, in a community garden type setup, have information on how people can get their own plot uh, to rent if you're using just a piece of that community garden for your youth or school garden project. If 
theft continues to be an issue, try signs that specifically say, do not steal. Um, you could say, uh, please don't steal our, our vegetables. You didn't grow them. Uh, have you nurtured this tomato or cucumber uh, all summer just to have it stolen? You know, something that maybe will cause people to reflect and think before they take the produce. Uh, another item that often gets stolen is a melon. But unfortunately, the melons get picked early. The people think, oh, it's a watermelon. They'll take it. They'll break it open. And it's still green inside. They don't realize it's not even ready to be harvested. Uh, a teacher at Lowell Elementary in Sioux Falls recommended a sign that just says, not ripe until August, and that may deter uh, from early harvesting uh, of, the, of the melon um, and may eventually lead to melons being there when the kids uh, using the garden uh, want them. If the vandalism gets worse, uh, you're finding uh, these simple signs aren't working, you could always uh, try something like smile, you're on camera. Uh, Lowell Elementary, again, did have a um, cheap system donated with, for recording purposes, and they were able to put a camera on the garden. Uh, it did help with some activity, but they just put signs up that said you're on camera. Um, other gardens have, have tried more um, different, different types of signs, such as you know, beware of bees, interesting signs like that to maybe deter activity. Um, keep in mind, signs might not work. Uh, I've heard stories of signs themselves being stolen from a garden. Creating a barrier might be beneficial, uh, especially if your vandals are wildlife. Uh, fences are the best way to keep rabbits out. They'll also be good at deterring people that are just cutting through the space or biking through the space as a shortcut and trampling on things. Um, however, if a theft wants the vegetables, they'll still get the vegetables whether there's a fence there or not. Uh, you'd have to consider how you're going to keep this fence um, locked if, if that's what you choose to do. You know, a lock, you'll have to distribute keys or consider a combination lock so that people can uh, share the code. Um, if you don't have the money for a fence, I mean, fences are, are, are very limiting. They're expensive and you have to maintain them. But if you can't afford that, you could consider having um, some type of a perimeter that might keep people out of the garden. So an edible perimeter, things that are easy to snack on, such as cherry tomatoes or, or raspberries that line your garden. Uh, that might keep people satisfied without them entering into the space. Uh, you could also try uh, something thorny to keep people out. You know, raspberries, again, have thorns, and people may not go into the space if it's surrounded by a thorny uh, bramble. Uh, you could also consider a living wall of some sort. Uh, you want to grow cucumbers anyway, you can grow them up on a trellis, and that might create a nice barrier that almost hides what's within the garden space. Some of the items uh, that are sought by, by thieves often are tomatoes and melons and, and pumpkins. They're very tempting uh, for vandals as well. Uh, smashing pumpkins seems to be a favorite activity of some. So one suggestion is to sort of try to avoid these items, um, but we really don't want to have to do that, so maybe you could try to hide them or blend them into the garden space could plant those into the middle um, where they're harder to get to and surround them with things that are less appealing like maybe potatoes or Brussels sprouts or kale, something that isn't often sought after. You could also consider trying to plant some unique varieties that aren't as appealing, things like yellow tomatoes or white pumpkins or round carrots or purple cauliflower uh, really probably aren't sought after a, uh, by a theft thief, and they will look at those crops as kind of weird and strange anyway, so they might leave them alone. Ultimately, I think it's really important to keep your garden in good condition. Uh, people feel justified in stealing if they think the plot has been abandoned. I've had experience with this. I was working with a youth garden project in Sioux Falls where the kids would only come out every one to two weeks, and so uh, there was just not a lot of activity in the space, and I walked up on a neighbor who was picking in the garden. And I said, oh, you know that this is a, a garden for uh, these students to use. And he said, oh, no, they've abandoned it. I've been harvesting because nobody ever comes to pick. So um, keep, keep your garden picked and cleaned. Um, really, you need to be in that garden daily, if not every other day, uh, because you know things like those red tomatoes just sitting there are quite tempting. 
A few other ideas. Um, obviously, we do not want to keep things laying around. Keep those tools and valuables locked up. Don't keep them laying in the garden. Uh, motion lighting uh, could be very valuable if you can afford it. If you're by a building, um, it could be easy to install such a light. If you're out in a, an open field, you know, it's much harder to do uh, motion lighting. But having that light that flashes on during the night really could be uh, helpful. Um, you really do need to make sure that those that are watching the garden for you, those neighbors um, or, or garden managers, and even the children that use the garden, know what to do if they see something happening in the space. Um, for an adult, you know, rather than accusing the people that you see in the garden that shouldn't be there, um, you can just walk up and say, oh, this is a school garden and the children are using the produce as part of their curriculum and they're learning from it. And, and if it's a community garden setting, again, explain how uh, this person could get their own plot. And usually the thief will walk away somewhat embarrassed and, and not come back. Um, if you do walk up on vandalism or you see vandalism occurring, consider can you, can you take photos? Do you need to get the authorities involved? Um, with children, you'll want to remind them, you know, for them not to get into the space and, and not get involved and just report the activity. They shouldn't go up to an adult and, and, and try to stop what's going on. Um, we have had instances, though, with children at Lowell reporting other children who have, have wrecked their space. You know, these kids are really proud of their garden space, and, and they have reported when, when they know the student who has been causing damage. Last, I think it's just really important to remind you all that you want to repair the damage or graffiti or replant if things have been dug out as soon as possible. If you look like you're not going to tolerate and not going to deal with it, people uh, will get bored, uh, vandals especially, they'll get bored with it. Um, we've had this happen at Lowell. Uh, students were poking sticks into the side of the greenhouse. So uh, Groundworks, the nonprofit there that, that um, assists uh, these school gardens, uh, purchased some plywood and they put it up replacing that wall. And kids can't poke through the plywood so they got bored. and haven't bothered it since. Um, again, we were seeing where children were constantly digging potatoes up out of the garden, um, but we just kept replanting, putting them back in, and eventually they left them alone. So um, you will likely deal with these issues, um, but just keep moving ahead. Um, try these different deterring approaches, and uh, hopefully you'll have enough product to still have a good program. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, thank you again for watching this iGrow podcast. Thank you.